really appreciate your time. Your report says that Morgan Stanley ran into significant skepticism about India, particularly with overseas investors who say that India has not delivered its potential despite uh, it being the second fastest growing economy. Why, according to you and your research, what did India do right in the last nine years, which it did not do earlier? Yeah, thank you to, for having me on the show. Uh, so lots of things have happened, actually. I think, uh, first of all, um, and this is a bit technical, uh, India has focused on macro stability. So if I were to use uh, from purely from an economic perspective, I would characterize the prime minister as an inflation hawk, which essentially means that he doesn't want inflation. And this is very critical for prosperity of the economy. So in order to achieve that outcome, uh, he actually changed the mandate for the central bank. So our Reserve Bank of India is now solely focused on delivering lower inflation outcomes. And the best result of this was seen during the pandemic. While the world at large was facing runaway inflation, you know, countries like US, which normally have sub 2% inflation experience, 9% inflation, India's inflation rise was very modest. So in part, this was to do with uh, with uh, how the RBI's policy was framed, and in part, it had to be done. It had to do with how the government actually protected poor people during the pandemic. So instead of doling out cash, which is what a lot of Western uh, hemisphere economies did, uh, India was actually giving food, and that's not inflationary. So that's the first big change, and you know the seeds of this change was sown in 2013 when the then uh, Federal Reserve Governor Ben Bernanke just set taper and India's currency was down 20%. And the RBI was uh, in a spot and had to raise uh, interest rates by 200 basis points overnight. So India is no longer in that situation. We call this macro stability. So its macro is far more stable. Hmm. The second thing that has happened, I think, is how India does social transfers. And I think this is a story that has been missed uh, by uh, you know, headline media in India. Uh, and the, the seeds of this were sown when uh, when the prime minister decided that uh, we have to accelerate uh, Aadhaar and identify each and every Indian digitally. And India stack and Aadhaar allows the government to actually make social transfers very efficiently without leakages. Okay. Of course, this was supplemented by uh, enormous effort by the government to open bank accounts from for the hitherto unbanked. And now... We're able to do these transfers without the age-old leakages, middlemen, corruption. So the intended beneficiaries are getting what they uh, deserve to get. Not only that, the government has actually now also changed some of these things into delivering stuff in kind rather than just cash. Because you can't control how people spend cash. Okay. Whereas you can send QR codes which pay the fees of your girl child. Hmm. And that actually achieves desired outcomes. So this is the second big change that I would highlight. Massive improvement in social transfers, which is, I think, directly improving the lives of poor people in India. Okay. The third is the change in with respect to macro policy on how the government should interact with corporations. See, ultimately, corporate entities or businesses, I should say, are the ones who invest. When they invest, they create jobs. When they create jobs, you get wages, you get all-round prosperity. It's a virtuous cycle. You can't achieve this by distributing free money and wages to people. It doesn't work that way. That creates inflation. This government is very focused on, on improving uh, the business viability case for India. And corporate India is back. In fact, multinational companies are back. Uh, we run proprietary indicators which suggest that multinational company sentiment on India is at all-time highs, and they are investing. And as this investment cycle rolls out, uh, you will see greater prosperity. So I can go on and on, but I think these are the three mega headline changes, which is you know which are at the helm of the transformation that the Indian economy is experiencing, and why we are uh, everybody is uh, uh, focus point today. Boards around the world are discussing India discussing what they should be doing in India, how they should invest, how should they should access the Indian market, because this is the place where you want to be in the next 10, 20 years.